I know you're listening. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to I'll talk to you after this is uh, over. Everybody's coming in. How y'all doing? Uh, I can't see anybody there though. So there's nobody in the chat. Let me see here. Participants, 84. Welcome guys. Yeah, we're coming in guys. We're coming in. Okay, awesome. Um, so we're gonna get started here in a second. Just watching the number go up. It's still, it's still climbing very fast. So uh, just make sure as many people are in the room as possible. Welcome to the webinar. It's uh, awesome to have you guys. And, and ladies and gentlemen, by the way, there's some ladies on this too. And um, so this was like gonna be the first, uh, and it's kind of a series that I'm gonna do every Thursday. I'm gonna kind of adjust it. But the reason we entitled it um, Moving from Fear to Courage is because of the climate and every, a lot of people are scared. So it's just kind of a weekly update on that kind of energy. But what I wanna do in this is I wanna, I've been really watching what you guys, the questions you're asking each week. And a lot of you are still asking questions about dating. So we definitely wanna incorporate that in here. And we wanna talk about how the mind uh, develops more courage over the next four weeks or, or, or when we're going to get into releasing and we can get into the laws and how, how to start seeing, when you start seeing one, one of the most important things that we need to be able to make huge transition in life is the ability to, uh, as an understanding, basically, the first thing you've got to get is, is you've got to get awareness and understanding because if you don't understand, you don't see the whole global law of relativity, which we'll get into when we get into the video on the laws. When you don't see the big picture, it's hard to get understanding. You think all this is all there is. Oh my God, the world's falling apart. Oh my God, the economy's crashing. Oh my God, this is happening. And you don't realize that everything does run in cycles. You know, there's a lot of rhythm too. And um, a lot of polarity, opposites. And so everything runs in cycles. And if you, if you look through history, you'll see that there's, you know, the economy consistently has ups and downs, but it typically goes up if, in a healthy society. And it wants to because life is more. It's another a natural law that, the, the, the universe is ever expanding. Everything wants to expand for you. And, but, it, but what happens is when we resist expansion and growth, when we resist this insane growth, but we actually, um, um, you know, when we, let's say for example, you're in a job that doesn't serve you anymore and uh, you've been in it a long time. You're comfortable there. Maybe I even like the job, but you're scared to leave. But there's all these other opportunities showing up and you think, you think I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm going to take that opportunity. I'm super excited. And then as it gets closer, you quit and say, no, I'm not going to do it because you're scared. You're nervous. But inside, you really want to do it. And what universe, the God, the great pumpkin in the sky says, whatever you want to call it, um, says is, is, is I keep, you keep asking for this expansion because that's what you're dreaming and fantasizing about, but then you won't take the physical action to do it because you're scared. So there's that fear. And maybe you do that three, four, five times and, and you miss each opportunity. Um, and then finally, what happens is because you won't take the, the risk, you won't do the jump to go to the next place, but you keep asking for it in the back of your mind and your deepest thoughts, your secret thoughts, you're dreaming about doing this, it creates an incongruency between your subconscious mind and what your and your actions, and that incongruency is has to cause something. That tension has to seek resolution, and so there's going to be a resolution. Maybe you suddenly find a way to lose your job. Uh, maybe you suddenly find a way to um, to get your, you know basically get yourself fired, or, or your company just suddenly seems to go out of business, or something happens, and next thing you know, you have no choice. But instead of, and this is what we're going to cover today, instead of breakthrough to breakthrough, like I'm going to go to the next level, I'm going to go to the next level because you're, you love the unknown and you're courageous like a Richard Branson where there's a sense of, wow, I don't know what's over there, but there's something pulling me. My gut brain says go, which is a real thing, the gut brain, and, and I trust it. Uh, instead of doing that, you, you tend to, um, the average person tends to hold on to security and not take the risk because we like our knowns. We don't want to be in the unknowns. And then so... What the universe, God, has to do is collapse all that insecurity. 
and it has to collapse, not the insecurity, but collapse the structure you've created so that you're left in the unknown. We call that break down to breakthrough. So there's a sense of everything falling apart to be reborn. We see this a lot in the dating coaching with the guys. When we take guys out, a lot of you guys say, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. But then we take you out to do it, suddenly you want to run away and you want to hide. And you need us to hold you there to, to be able to do it, to even just say hi to people walking down the street, to start to express yourself, to start to express your feelings. Suddenly it's like, wait a minute, I want to do all this, but, but I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And there's a sense of pullback with your whole body. And we have to almost guide you through this breakdown so that, so that all the stories that are, that are keeping you from being social and outgoing and open and friendly and enjoying a woman's company naturally, all those stories that keep you from doing that uh, start to break down. They start to fall apart. And then we can release them, process them through releasing. But we got to stir them up first. So that's the process of breakdown. A breakthrough is stirring up all these deep emotions, feelings, stories that are buried deep inside your subconscious. Um, if you want to get oil, you got to drill through the ground, right? And a lot of times as you drill deeper and deeper, digging for the oil, you'll hit this, uh, you'll hit some really hard surfaces and they got to get the diamond drill bits out and really dig through it. And that's really impacted embedded uh, stuff and it protecting the oil, the, the, which is technically the gold mine in this case. And, you know, we got to sometimes work really hard to get through it because it's been down there so long, impacted all that stuff, locking it up. But as that breaks open, what happens? The oil comes flying out. And this goes back to Napoleon Hill's statement, you know, when, um, when the riches begin to come, you begin to wonder where they were during all the lean years. And suddenly all this success, all this change, everything starts happening. And you're like, what the hell? It's just coming from every direction. And you're like, why was this ever hard? And that's, that's a sign there was a big shift in your subconscious mind deep down inside. A major, uh, probably a ton of stories uh, got shifted in that time, one major one or two major, and pretty soon your, your, your whole relationship, you can't even see it, but your whole relationship to the way you're relating to women, to the outside world has changed because now you're, it's, it's like these, all these subtle one percents, you maybe drop in, lock in a little bit more, maybe your heart opens a little more, maybe you get a little more in your turn on, maybe you trust your gut brain a little more, you think a little less, you flow more and, and there's just tons of one percents happening your voice has dropped a little bit. You seem like a different person. Other people say, wow, you look so different. There's something different about you. And they can't explain it. It's because you've changed so many 1% that you look like a different person. That, that has to do with all the breakdown to breakthroughs you've had and causing this whole, you know, whole portion of your subconscious mind to change. Well, this works with money. This works with uh, all forms of success. This works with health. This works with everything that, that, that it causes growth. And the average person is too scared to go through breakdown to breakthrough. So we're going to teach you about those today, what they are, what they look like and how to use, uh, ultimately when we get into the releasing class, we'll be using releasing in conjunction with this process to cause fast growth. Now, if you look at Lester Levinson, he had the ultimate breakdown to breakthrough, right? Uh, and there, he came up with a releasing originally and what did he do? What did he not, he didn't do, he didn't choose to do it, it happened to him. But hey, if you read his life story, it's fascinating. He had so much resistance in his life and he fought and pushed and fought and pushed and he just wouldn't surrender. So finally, what was he left with? He was sent home to die. He was so sick from all the pushing and from all the condi medical conditions he had that he was given about something like two weeks to live and he was sent home to, to die. And there was a complete surrender at that point. I, and it was like the sense that he said, I got all these advanced degrees, but I just don't know what I'm doing. And he started to look at books because he said, I'm going to look for an answer to figure out what happiness is because I don't know what else to do. And then he said, I, the books don't even have the answer. So he threw them all out and he just started asking questions of his mind. Now imagine sitting there and you're told don't move as little as humanly possible because any movement is going to move you closer to death. You maybe have two weeks, get your things in order. How much pressure is that? How many deep old stories are going to come up about who you are, regrets, sadness, loneliness. I was just talking to Jonathan here about a girl I knew many, many, many years ago. I actually went on one date with her and uh, we were talking and she was a physical therapist in hospice care. And for those of you that don't know, hospice care is where people typically go to when they're passing away, they go into a hospice care center and they get taken care of there till they pass. And, um, and she was a physical therapist at hospice care. And so she said, I would do the physical therapy on all these people and they were filled with regret. 
the bulk of them were really sad over the things they didn't do or the bad things they did and their regrets in life. They worked too much, um, things like this. And it, it filled them up with all kinds of regret. She said every once in a while, one would come in. It was in the minority of people, but one would come in that was filled with, uh, with love and peace and ready to pass on, had no problems, was completely happy. And she said, and it was always the same reason for both. The ones that were upset, they were sad, they were angry, they were hurt, they were bitter, they were resentful, all were resentful of the things they didn't do, their regrets. And the ones that were really um, happy had gone for their dreams. They had explored the unknown reaches of whatever they wanted to do. They like, I'm gonna go for it. Every case, they had lived a full life, whether it was they wanted a bigger family, they wanted to build this business and then share with their family. There was all this, 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 this stuff they did to feel fully alive. And that's what I want for you guys. As we move from um, fear to courage and really the lower end of the emotional scale, which is behind me over here, to courage, um, it's gonna help you guys really uh, understand what's going on. Now, I'm curious uh, from you guys on that end, as I look at this in my screen, it's reverse image. Is it reverse image for you guys? No, it's fine, it's, it's, it's uh, readable. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure, because that would be really weird if it was changing, making it reverse image on you guys. <laughs> okay, so let's dive into this a little bit. Um, I wrote a couple little notes here, just to remind me of, um, did I put it on this one or the other one? Here we go. Okay, so we were talking about breakdown to breakthrough and to understand the breakdown to breakthrough, I use a little diagram and it's called the terror barrier. And um, something I learned from David Nagel a long time ago and I think he got it from Bob Proctor because I've seen Bob Proctor talk about it too. And uh, a lot of these guys, they, they get it from different people. Bob probably got it from somebody too. It's a great teaching, but um, let me know if I'm stepping farther away from the mic, so I'll try to speak up. Let me know if it becomes a problem. Broken pen. Okay. Okay. So this is your starting point. That says start down here. And up here, we've got the word goal. Hopefully you guys can, can you guys see this clearly? George, Jonathan, give me, give me feedback. I'm gonna rewrite this bigger. Yeah, you can see that now, that's perfect. Right, cool. So that's your goal. Um, so to illustrate this, this represents tension. Okay, so this is the rise of tension, uh, stress, tension, worry, all your stories. When, you, when, you, when things are high up here, stories come up. Okay, you start hearing stories. Um, this line here, that line represents time. Okay. So you have a goal um, and we're gonna go to this goal. Let's say the goal is to have your business be more successful after uh, COVID-19 ends and the coronavirus scares over than you've ever been before because you've learned so much from this. Or maybe it's to get the, the girlfriend of your dreams or maybe it's to earn X amount of dollars or to get sick of your cat. I don't care what it is, but you got a goal. And we can pick a goal that, that's really big, something you've, uh, you you maybe even tried a few times and haven't quite got yet you really wanted to do so um actually let me pull one of the coaches for this um who wants to work with me a little bit even jonathan whoever oh sorry anthony's oh, okay hey. With anthony hey what's up man hey buddy good to see you give me a goal give me a goal bring yeah, one up or give me a real one i don't care uh okay so actually give me one from the past Give me a past goal you had, maybe from when you first started with Fearless or first got to go on with this. What's a past goal? Ah, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, does it have to be dating related or could it be anything? Anything. Okay, cool. I mean, to make $100,000. Mm -hmm. 
in, okay. a, in, in a year. You're, you're working on that one now, though. It's not passed, right? No, it's not passed, but it's uh, more relevant. Okay, I want uh, that one's great. And I was thinking about doing the one with the car for you, but do you have yeah. one, already, a goal you completed, you've got done? Uh, yeah, uh, this, is, this is the car one. The car one's a great one. But you haven't completed it, right? No, but I keep on I'm getting, I'm getting close to it still. Yeah, I want one you completed. And we'll use that. We'll use the car. So you want what kind of car do you want? Uh, right now it's a Nissan Skyline. Nissan. Yeah, Skyline. It's is there two a Nissan. I can't remember. I said it again. Two S's or one S in Nissan. Uh, two S's. Okay, good. I got it right. What year? Uh, ninety four. It's a classic, pretty much now. Yeah, and it's shipped in from Japan. So he wants this Nissan Skyline customized car shipped in from Japan that has a right-hand steering wheel. And it's a, it's a really famous sports car from Japan. It's really fun to ride, uh, to drive, supposedly. So I expect he'll let me drive it, hopefully. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so he wants it. That's what he wants. So he's at his starting point now, right? Mm -hmm. So if we go all the way back to your original starting point, when, you, when, we first, when you first talked about this car and we said, why don't you get the car of your dreams? Uh, do you remember what that felt like? Yeah, it felt like I had been seeing this car since I was a kid in the video games and on TV and all these YouTube videos. And so it didn't feel realistic to actually ever own the car. It felt, I felt safe dreaming about it. That's what it felt like. When you guys asked me to actually get the car, I was like, <laughs> it seems a little impossible. So, so dreaming about it felt good, but actually getting it didn't. Uh, yeah. Getting it was like too much. It was like, I can't do that. So stories started to come up, right? Oh, entirely. Okay. So then you start setting on this path of dreaming. Okay. And so that's what this starting point represents. Now, as you're set on this path of dreaming, uh, you know, there could be stuff that's going up and down, but we're going to use a basic flow here just to, to illustrate a point. Let's actually use the, the green marker now, even though it's broken. There we go. So you start going this way and first there's no tension, right? It's, it's just an idea and you play with it and you can fantasize about it and it feels really good. Who's, you, you, did you have that experience, Anthony? Oh, for sure, for sure, absolutely. You look at it online, you picture yourself in it, mm -hmm. and it feels really good. But as time moves forward and you start to get closer and closer to earning enough income to get this car, uh, and you start doing more and more stuff to get it, like you've been on the website lately, you've been calling uh, the guy that ships them in, you've been asking him what it takes to get, you've been looking at the money reality, right? Do you understand yeah. what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Have you felt the tension rising like this? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. What are stories that are coming up as you do it? As you tend to be investigating more <laughs> right, getting the car, this represents the actual receiving the car crossing this, this yeah. line here. So what kind of stories are coming up? I have stories like, you know, is it smart financially to do this? You know, I have money to put down on it. It's like, should I do this? Where am I going to park it? Is it going to get stolen? You know, all these little, all these little things that are coming up, um, especially the more digging into the research around the car. There's, so, there's all this resistance that kind of make me second guess having the car, even though I know I really want the car. Yeah, so your subconscious mind is giving you all the reasons this won't work. And as you get closer and closer to actually purchasing it, more and more reasons are coming up, right? Each one of these is a story, okay? So these, for everybody, represent your stories, which are driven by thought, uh, subconscious programs deep down inside. Sorry, I'm writing sideways, but I tend to do that. And so it continues to rise. Now, let's say um, that guy had the car ready for you today and you were gonna go sign the paperwork today and put money down. What's the first thought, feeling comes up? Do you feel the spike at the thought of that? Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it feels like, uh, I don't know if I wanna do it today. <laughs> Like, what if me and Dave were driving over there right now to pick you up and drive you over there so you couldn't run away from buying the car? You know, I just, I just surrendered to it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, how many stories would you be concerned about on the way to the car lot to pick it up before you sign the paperwork? You know, man, I don't, I'd imagine a lot of them would come up, but I, I don't, as we're already going to do it, I think they're just kind of the wayside. Good, good. So these stories keep popping up. That's the buried stuff inside you. And as you get closer and closer to the car, more and more stories are coming up to be released that you hadn't even thought of, right? Yeah, so we'll yeah. Spend, I'll put an S here. This is another story. And it keeps doing this until suddenly you cross this line. 
And you're going to hear the most stories, the tension rises, you're going to hear the most stories the closest you get to this line. As you get really close to that line, that's why the tension's rising and stories are popping up one after another. Yeah. Right before you cross the line, there's the old story of three feet from gold, uh, which is a true story. Right before you cross the line is when you, the tension gets the worst, the stress gets the worst, you're hearing the most stories as to why something won't work. Like approaching a girl, she's not going to like me. There's no way. I'm going to get in trouble. Somebody's going to, uh, the police, they're going to arrest me. I've heard that one before. I've never seen that happen. Uh, things like that. And then when you cross the line, he signs the paperwork, drives off with the car, or you, 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 you have that total surrender in your subconscious mind. Suddenly you wonder why you were ever worrying about it because suddenly everything calms down inside your body. It's like you created so much tension and tension seeks resolution. Okay. Uh, you created so much tension that the nervous system had a choice to make. Either it had to surrender these stories so that it could get back to uh, normal again. We can't stay on it. Or it had to find a way to Most people get right about here or right in here or right in here and they turn around and run back. And this destroys trust in yourself. You're going to fall through. This is a trust story. And what it does is when you run back at the start and you have to start back over, maybe you, you regain all the weight back, or maybe you start a business and you get a little bit of going and quit. You run back. And what happens the next time you destroy the trust. trust. The next time you go to go forward, it's hard. Hey, hey, hey. Do that part again about trusting yourself because your mic was up breaking up. Say that again. Yeah, the last thing you said about trusting yourself, um, your mic started breaking up around that. You might repeat it. Uh, every time you turn around and run back, because like a lot of people, right before they cross the finish line, imagine a football field and you're going to cross into the end zone. And as soon as you cross the end zone, nobody can touch you. You can dance, you can flow, you can have a good time. Everything's great. But what happens is right before you cross into that end zone is when the defensive line is the strongest, when they're fighting the hardest, when they're going to try to destroy you. That's your subconscious, your ego is going to try to stop you. If you turn on the run back, all the way to start, you quit. There's no point in doing this. And what happens is you, uh, you actually have to start again, and it's harder the next time because you are now building a pattern of run, quitting right before you, you right after right thinking about it. And okay, so this is a trust destroyer running back. Yeah, your your mic is doing it one more time. You mind just doing the piece on trust, trusting yourself, right after you said uh, going backward, going backwards. It's, it's a it's a piece. So I I don't know which part you're talking about. It it takes me three or four minutes to say it. So I've said it twice. Which which aspect of it? <laughs> Yeah, it's like right when you get to the meat of it, it starts to just break up. Right when you said uh, when you start to go backwards, how re, you know re, it reaffirms the pattern that you've been doing your whole life, which is going back as soon as the tension gets thick. Yeah. So if you follow through with breakthroughs and you get your breakthroughs and you get that experience of complete release in your body, like hitting the end zone, and it feels really good. I follow through. Do a rock. It's too bad. Too bad. I, I can't, it's, then it's gotta be something else. I, I can't control that. I can turn off the, the picture, but then you're going to lose it. It's because um, you're the, you're the universe, man. They don't, want, they don't want people to hear it. That's right. Because Anthony, you want it too bad. At least you're one. Um, <laughs> uh, every time, I, I've, I've tried to explain this four times. Are you guys getting it? Put, put it in the comments if you're getting the idea. Okay. Um, I'll try to explain it the time. Um, everybody says they're getting it. And so, yeah, so we're going to have the end zone um, more than once. You, you literally, this happens to us all the time. Maybe it's the first time you give a public speech. Maybe it's that very first girl you approach. Maybe you approach immersion with us that's on this call. Uh, where you got three to, uh, two days of that intense approaching and then all the follow-ups and that those first few are just hell. And then that program, all of us are easy and fun and fluid and relaxing. And you're like, why was this ever hard? It's because you've crossed in the approach immersion. You've not just crossed this line. Once you've crossed it, you've crossed it that time. You've 
brought enough times where you reframed your whole reality in that area. And you had us holding you in a container to make sure you did it. And a lot of times it's just me. You need a um, so understand that in this area, you're going to be in the unknown. When you're in this area, it's all unknown. And all your stories are coming up trying to get you to stop going to the unknown. And the most successful people in the world thrive in the unknown. Your Kobe Bryant, your Shaquille O'Neal, your Michael Jordan, your people like that, they thrive in the unknown. They actually get better when the tension rises and they don't, and, 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 it's, an, and, and it's an unknown territory. That's what makes successful people so good. Successful businessmen can, like Elon Musk, really thrives in the unknown. Um, and uh, so Elon Musk really thrives in the unknown. And so does uh, somebody like Richard Branson and even Donald Trump. I mean, he, he, he gets off in doing new things and taking a lot of risk. Okay. Um, so is anybody else having trouble with the audio now? Is everybody good? Because I'm noticing it's good right now. Okay, good. So this is breakdown to breakthrough. What we want to do uh, is, and I'll try to sit here and talk more rather than back there. Uh, what we want to do is um, we want to create more breakthroughs to break through. This means you, this pattern will still happen. Tension will rise, stories will come up, but because you're conscious of the pattern and you've had experiences of crossing into that end zone repeatedly, and you've journaled it each time, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, ten times, and you see the pattern of how much better life gets right before those stories, three feet from gold, everything's going nuts, and those stories break up and you have that surrender. And then you see that consistently when I do that through life, that my life gets better. It, and sometimes it seems like it's going downhill right here, but then suddenly I cross that end zone and my life gets better again and again. And you can see that pattern 10, 20 times in your life, probably hundreds, maybe thousands, if you really could see them all, you would begin to realize how this works and you begin to trust in it more and more and more. And you want to build that trust in this pattern. So you start to create breakthrough to breakthrough. So when the tension builds, instead of getting worried and wanting to run away, you get excited. So when you hear your negative thoughts going off, you're like, um, you're like, wow, this is a powerful idea. This is, this is, I'm heading towards something that's going to cause a huge change in my life. Okay. I'm getting mixed, uh, um, the responses I'm seeing in the chat. Some people are saying the sound's cutting off and other people are saying they're fine. Um, so um, I want to do a quick test. Um, where are we at now, guys? Yeah, everything you've said in the last two minutes or so has been great. Uh, these guys were replying to when you were talking from behind. Okay, I'm seeing new, okay, good. So, um, kill that. So let's, let's take this level really important uh, that you guys understand this. First thing I did to get this, when I got this concept, there was something I decided to do and it was a little different because I wanted to see it at play um, in the world. And so what I did was I went and Hey Brian, it's happening again. Yeah, I can't control it guys, so. Um, I see where it says your speaker's not working. It's the same stuff that happens with the mic. Um, so it's not the mic because I don't have the mic hooked up. Um, there must be something, either there's something wrong with this laptop or there's an internet problem. So I'll go have the laptop checked out after this, uh, after this, I'll take it somewhere. Let me see if there's any, like, that's funny because okay, the this might be a bandwidth is... issue with everybody online right now with the zoom and people at home as well. Yeah, that's it. It could be that everybody's at home, and that could be a big piece. Of it. Um, okay, I just shut off one application. Let's check this one. Do I need this one? No, I can close this one. I'm gonna see if I can create some more resources on my laptop. See if that helps. Okay, let's continue on. How do I sound now? Better? Yeah. So that's okay. Okay, cool. So this is so if you get a journal out, like I have a really nice journal, and you can sit there and journal your history. Um, and you can go through your whole history and you can start to see all the breakdown to breakthroughs you've had in your life that were unconscious and make them conscious. Move them from the Those are all breakdown to breakthroughs. And each one of them, because I did a lot of releasing, meditation, processing, and, and, and I kept going, 
uh, I ended up better than before. I ended up growing in, in, uh, in some very powerful ways. And um, I can hear somebody in the background. Oh, that's Anthony. I'm going to mute you, buddy. Okay. And so I could, hear, I, I could literally see those patterns. One after another. You can start to see those patterns in life that you can see on the other side. example or one of the most famous is the guy um who was three feet from gold a i believe it i believe that was australia i'm not sure but he got full bars here that's why i'm using i'm using a different location for better at full bars um yeah by any chance can you use uh, jonathan's computer see if it makes a difference we can try that jonathan can you come out we'd have to we can just switch yeah we'll just put them on the panel Jonathan, are you hearing me? He's no longer on the call. Hold uh, on. I'm gonna... there either. Huh? Yeah, I don't see him on here either. You uh, are doing well now. To... And... And wait, all... I'm trying to hit him up. Okay, cool. I guess in the meantime, you keep talking, but we'll try to get in contact. And also try to remove your phones, like move them away from the laptop. That could also influence them. Possibly. Never. I've always had them here, though, but in the past. I think it's just the laptop. I think there's something wrong with it. And I'm, I've seen this I've been seeing this message that it's a resource problem on the laptop that's not internet. And I uh, and so I think there's something going on on the laptop. I'll go take it down to Microsoft and have it checked out. Um, so in the meantime, one of you guys can contact Jonathan. Does it sound good now? Yes. So he he got a lot of investors for this uh, um, for, to, for this gold mine, ended up losing the uh, bank. And out again. Hey, Jonathan, you there? We're gonna fix this. Give us one second, guys. Hey, Jonathan, you there? Hold on. Yeah. Uh, I need to use your laptop. I think it's my laptop. There we go. Good. Awesome. Uh, just give us a second, guys. Uh, we'll be back on just a second once he gets the laptop resolved. Yeah, you take mine, I'll take yours. You can see the chats on mine. Jonathan has to log back in though. He's not on the panel yet. Yeah, I'll go ahead and send him. Okay. We're almost there. Keep talking to him. Um, in the meantime, Anthony. Okay. So uh, just, uh, just by a show of... Uh, answers in the comments. How many of you guys are actually getting the concepts that he's talking about right now? Uh, despite everything that's going on with the mic. Awesome. Okay, good. Uh, I'll go ahead and reach your mic, uh, Jonathan. Thank you. Um, Jonathan, I need to turn the speaker up on this one. Let me turn the one down on that one. Okay, cool. All right, he's got 70%. Okay, cool. 
There we go. Sounds coming up. We turned up higher. Okay, cool. Okay, guys, can you hear me now? Perfect. Okay, so we'll see if it's a laptop. If, if it is, I'll go have that laptop wiped out and, and restart it or, and completely have it redone because it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, so what ended up happening with this, this gold mine is that he sold the equipment to this guy and this guy picked up the, uh, uh, the mine. What the guy did, it was different than the original guy. The original guy was digging all over the place, couldn't find it, was the guy brought in an expert that understood fault lines. And the expert said, well, the fault line on this probably moved about three feet and said, so the, the gold is probably three feet off from where they think it should be based on the vein they found because of that's how fault lines work. And so this guy literally with just a little bit of expert advice went and dug right where the, the guy told him to dig and hit one of the dig and hit one of the biggest gold mines in history. He, he didn't give up. He committed and he followed through. And, but the big part is that the guy, the other guy, he was this close. He was right here. And his stories told him to give up. It's never going to work. Now here's the, the interesting part is the other guy who had given up because he bought into this story here and ran away, <clears throat> learned from that and decided to go into the insurance business next. And in the insurance business, he decided he would not give up. He was gonna become an amazing, he saw the potential. He said, there's always another, there's something else there. And he said, that even I believe he didn't even really wanna give up the gold mine. It was a sense of like, I have to. And so in the insurance business, because he learned from this previous mistake, he got, he got a breakdown to break through in the end because he became one of the top insurance salesmen in the whole company for the nation. Ended up making millions off of health insurance or not health insurance, life insurance. So that's just an ex another example of this breakdown to breakthrough concept. Um, so you can see it going here. Now I'm going to show you another diagram really quick. Um, are you guys watching the chat? Sounds still good. I can't hear you, Anthony. Yeah, everything's perfect in the chat. Everything's perfect with the sound, too. Okay, cool. Uh, there's a problem with the laptop, and we'll get that fixed. I'll take that out today. Let's see if I get it fixed. Um, okay, next piece. Um, uh, this is really important. It's going to create a huge illustration. Those breakdown to breakthroughs, as, as you journal them in your life, and you start to see all the major ones, you're going to be re begin to realize that this is happening everywhere in your life. Like when I was a child and I learned to ride a bike, I had a huge breakdown to breakthrough. I was scared. I falling down on the hill and then suddenly the breakthrough and the breakthrough was on the other side. I suddenly knew how to ride this bike. And now I can do all the things that come with riding a bike. I can get somewhere faster. I can go farther. I can stay out later. There's all these benefits from that. Um, I remember for some reason being terrified when I went from grade school to junior high or when I went to, I was used to be a terrified kid. So when I went to kindergarten and grade school, uh, and then junior high, that terrified me. Um, so there are all these, and then, and then, and then on the other side, you always begin to realize it's no big deal. Getting my first, uh, big office job in, in a company where I had to learn to program in this language that I didn't understand. And I was swore I was going to fail. And then boom, pretty soon it's easy as pie. There's these, 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 you know, I, and what keeps, what kept me moving forward at a young age was necessity. I had to get this pay. I had to get this job. I have to make this happen or, or I'm never going to get anywhere. I told the story about the, uh, becoming a hypnotist. It was so random because I had gone through the school, was too scared to practice. And then the only job that was left for me was a job of a hypnotist and they hired me right away. And I was, I didn't want to do it, but I needed the money to pay my rent. I got super sick the first few weeks, breakdown breakdown. I wanted to quit more than any job in my life. And then at the end of the two weeks, I loved it more than any job in my life. And I felt amazing breakthrough. So a lot of times we want to turn around and run away on the very thing we committed to. Napoleon Hill said um, that the most successful people in the world make up their mind quickly. Once they've got all the information, they take in all the information, absorb it, and then they change their mind slowly, if ever at all. And this is basically what Andrew Carnegie taught him. And, um, and so for a lot of us, we have a pattern. You got to decide if this is true for you by looking at your life of quitting things halfway through. And you want to break that pattern, even if you don't like what you're doing necessarily. You want to set a goal of a certain amount of achievement before you're going to change your mind. What is that goal? Um, give you an example. Um, 
And I always use this example because I actually did have a little bit of a massage business at one time. I started to learn massage. I was becoming a massage therapist many years ago when I was young. Started to work in a clinic, started to get some clients. And after I started to make a little money and there was this sense of responsibility building and I started to get more and more clients and I had to show up, I suddenly had all these excuses and stories why this wasn't going to work for me. I don't like it. It's no good. The same with hypnosis. I would have quit the hypnosis if it wasn't for that. Those same set of stories were coming up and that was the tension rising again, trying to get me to turn around and go this way. And I, in the massage case, I did. In the hypnosis case, I didn't have a choice. I needed the money to pay the rent. So what happened, what would have happened, what happened with all these stories is that why I was going to fail, why I would hate this job, why I would, I, I, I'm going to be, uh, it's not right for me, started to come up. And, um, and it was amazing because after that happened, uh, after I did the hypnosis, I really began to realize that a lot of those stories are coming up because of my fear of success, not because I don't want to do the thing. If I had followed that hypno, that excuse me, the massage job out to a level of fruition where I made a certain amount of money or, or worked for a certain amount of months or something like that, before I changed my mind and made a new decision, I would have got so much more benefit early on in life. So you want to start seeing where your breakdown to breakdowns are and your breakdown to breakthroughs are, and ultimately your breakthrough to breakthroughs. You want to start getting breakthroughs to breakthroughs. That's what we're working on here. And this is going to move you towards courage. This is the next piece to really understand. Okay, looks like a ladder, doesn't it? And we're gonna say this is, this is levels of awareness. This is your consciousness. This is that same, remember we said goal? That's your goal over there. This is your now, remember that earlier? And these are levels of consciousness. We'll say consciousness. You can say awareness too. Levels of consciousness is what that says. Okay, each one of these is a breakdown to breakthrough, or as you get more and more comfortable with moving into the unknown, becomes a breakthrough to breakthrough. Well, each one of these is this, and that's like, oh, I learned to ride a bike. Oh, I learned to do a wheelie. Oh, I learned to uh, balance the bike better. I learned to, and eventually up here, you're, uh, you know, as you keep rising to an infinite number of levels, you're a competitive mountain cross bike, uh, a, 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 a competitive mountain cross racer uh, sponsored by all these teams because you keep going through these unknown areas and developing more skills and you, and you, and you write out all the stories telling you, you can't, you're going to fail because that always has to happen on the way there. But as you get better and better at this process, you begin to not take the stories so personal. You begin to enjoy them, watch them, flow with them and everything. There's something else. This screen so they can see. Oh. I can't even see myself, so hold on. Let me let me pin me to the, the screen so I can see what it looks like. Okay, cool. Yep. It's your it's your it's not the screen, it's this. Okay. Guys gotta you gotta just get on the mic and tell me this stuff sooner. Don't wait so long. Cause now I I, I gotta go through this again. So this is the now. This is the goal, this is levels of consciousness, and each one of these is a breakdown to break through, building a new level of awareness, a new level of awareness, a new level of awareness, till you've got all the different little parts of awareness cleaned out in your subconscious mind. You've, you've processed all the deep uh, resistance to feeling in those areas that the whole, the big goal comes into to realization. How many of these do you have to go through to ultimately, for the average person to become, go from poverty to millionaire? to go from scared to death to even go out on a date to having a woman of your dreams in your life, to go from a hundred pounds overweight to six pack abs. You gotta have a lot. And so you gotta get good at this process. Now this is where releasing comes in and that's why releasing is so beautiful because releasing helps you to go through this process faster. As the stories start to rise, as your fears, doubts, and worries start to rise and you get all these stories about why you're gonna fail, 
this is where you use the releasing a lot. You want to stir those stories up. You want to hear them and learn not to take them so personal and then use the releasing to process and delete all those stories. Okay, cool. And coaches, by the way, make sure you're uh, keeping an eye on the chat and answering questions or anything that comes up in the chat that I can't get to. Anything that's easy to answer. That's why I want you guys here is, is really pay attention to that chat too. Um, and so there could be thousands of these throughout your life, little to big. You know, think about all the breakdown to breakthroughs an infant goes through, but he, he, the infant is comfort, more comfortable in the unknown than you are because that's all the infant knows is unknown. So they're exploring it all the time. And then we teach it to be careful and don't take risk. And we kind of screw that process up. But humans by nature want to explore the unknown. It's part of what makes us feel alive. So when you get good at this, you start to feel alive again. You start to feel turned on by life again because this opens an infinite number of possibilities of things you can create in your life. Look how much somebody like Elon Musk is doing this. He's doing this on an insane level. He's trying to figure out how to fly human beings to Mars. And I think he's going to do it at some point. And that's because he's really comfortable with this process. He's like, bring it on. So imagine if you could be comfortable with this process. Um, so uh, let me glance at my notes again really quick. I want to make sure I covered everything. There's more, a couple more things I want to cover here before we open this to questions. Um, okay, and so this brings me to another, another point is that you don't need to know how to do anything in particular. Um, you need to know the end result. If you look at this process right here, and you need to know the starting point. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know the how. I, nobody knows the how. Elon Musk doesn't know how he's gonna get people to Mars. He knows he wants to get people to Mars. So what he does is he knows the next step and he takes the next step, which is explore possibilities, look for uh, how would we protect people and, and whatever's coming up, like how do you get, a, uh, how, how, how would you have life support long enough? How long will it take to get there? He's gotta answer all these questions. The how will start to fill itself in as he answers more questions and gets through more, more areas of doubt and fear. Um, a better example, because that's a big example, it would be like dating. I don't need to know how I'm gonna become good with women. I just need to take the next step. What is the next step? Well, maybe it's I go out and say hi to five women a day and ask them the time, because that's all I, I have the courage to do. I don't know how it's gonna lead me to being good with women, but if I do that every day, pretty soon I'm gonna get comfortable with that. And then the next thing might be, maybe I'm gonna ask them a question. I'll go out and ask them a random question about what they like or something they want to do or, and then you kind of do that. And if you kind of look at the progressions we have, they build on that. You don't need to know how you just need to keep picturing that end result and keep doing the next thing that shows up in front of you. A perfect example of this is, is stairs. If you're walking up a set of stairs, you don't need to know every single stair all the way to the top of the, of the high rise building you're climbing. All you need to take is the next step and trust that it's there and then the next step, and then the next step, and every step will show the next step all the way to the top, okay? This doesn't mean you don't plan out hypotheses and, and, and hypothesize how you're gonna get there. You don't look at possibilities, but ultimately, when it comes down to the moment, you just take the next step that's in front of you, and that's what's gonna get you there. And then what'll happen is through that process of taking these steps, you're gonna have another breakdown to breakthrough, breakdown to breakthrough, okay? I don't know how I wouldn't have, I couldn't tell you how I got to most of the places I went. And when I did plan it out ahead of time, it never went the way I planned it out. So I just got there by taking step after step after step and exploring and being curious and learning and keep getting myself back up into courage, acceptance, love, peace, getting myself up to a, a re really good feeling state. Okay. Um, we talked about how the, the stories and stuff rise up. One of the things you're going to run into is fear. As you start to do this, you're gonna experience vulnerability, fear, doubt, worry, shame, guilt, and guilt will engender more fear. I did something bad, so I should be punished, therefore more fear. And this is all part of the releasing stuff when we get really deep into it. Um, you'll have a reaction. The average human being has a reaction to that fear. And what that reaction is, is a form of, of um, defense. I get angry at the thing that's making, that I perceive is making me uncomfortable. That girl is making me uncomfortable. She's a bitch. Why would I want to talk to her? She looks like cold. And you start to make her wrong. 
Okay. Or you start to attack yourself. Like, I'm a loser. I'll never succeed. There's no point in this. Maybe you do both. You attack her and yourself. All of that is a misuse of the fear energy. The fear energy is this rising energy and it starts to get bigger. And what we try to do is push it down because we're scared to face it. Okay. Um, and, and the, the next energy that comes after fear is anger, anger at the woman, anger itself. That's to defend against the fear. So we're getting angry at the woman, getting angry at myself, getting angry at both. That's the reaction. Uh, you, we're using some form of anger or, or pride to defend against having to feel that vulnerability. If you can see that, you'll see that fear is here and pride and anger are here. The higher, the lighter emotions, they're much lighter. And so if you can embody that anger, embody that pride, uh, and then just begin to relax into it and say, I'm not going to use it to make her wrong. I'm not going to use it to make me wrong. I'm going to use it to face my own fear. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm, I'm tired of being afraid. I'm going to welcome this fear fully and I'm going to start letting it go. And as we get into releasing, you'll understand this more. And you begin to use that anger like you have an army behind you uh, because that anger is coming up and you use it to feel your own fear. And it's almost like touching a flame to the fear and it starts to burn off the fear. And you can just sit. It's like a little mini, mini meditative process. And you'll see people will breathe and they'll feel it and they'll keep looking at their own emotion, feeling it, welcoming it, welcoming it. And it starts to release the fear. A little bit at a time. Don't try to release it all at once. Remember the 1% rule. We talked about that. A little bit at a time will eventually get you there. You know, um, and so just you don't need to go do it all at once. Just do the step that's in front of you. And that's what that's used for. And that's how you start to move in that direction. Now, what you're going to realize is that if you do this with the anger, that's a proactive use of anger, not a reactive use. Reactive is I lose control of my anger. Proactive is I use my anger consciously in a productive way. And same with the pride. Pride is a win-lose energy. I'm trying to win and I'm just going to be a loser. And you use it proactively in a healthy way. What happens to these energies? They rise up to courage. You can see it on the chart over there. And then you start to experience courage. You move from literally from fear to courage. Each one of these processes, is, you're going to face that. That reaction, the vulnerability, the stories. And, then, and using the, uh, the anger, wanting to attack others, wanting to attack yourself, wanting to quit, turn it in on all those insecurities and use it to release until you get through another breakthrough. And that's more courage in your, in your, in your, that you have. And that's more courage to face the next one, and more courage to face the next one. And you're ultimately, from courage, you're developing more acceptance and the ability to accept better too. And this is how we literally go from fear to courage. And if you get really good at this process, I guarantee you, your whole life will radically change over the next few years if you actually do this on a consistent basis. One year, three months can be radical. But if you, over the next two years, three years, watch, you won't even recognize you if you do this consistently and get really good at it. Okay? So that's how, that's the beginning of how we move from fear to courage. Now, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep developing this each week in different ways, depending on what you guys want. Maybe I'll talk about the laws, maybe we'll go deeper into releasing. We'll look at how it goes. We're gonna do. We're gonna be focusing on this idea of growing yourself in this area um, all the way uh, every Thursday. Now, if we look at it from a COVID nineteen perspective, the first day of COVID nineteen, when when everything started to shut down, there were yeah, there were some fears about the business and how. And then immediately, I think I lasted one or two days of a bit, and I haven't been bothered since. Matter of fact, I've been seeing this as a, as a great opportunity to provide a lot of value and a lot of fun and a lot of healing and a lot of growth for a lot of people. Yes, there are some people that are going to pass away, bless their souls, but there's a lot of people that are going to take what I, well, I'm almost calling it the great pause. You know, they're going to have this huge pause in society and in life, and we're going to reevaluate everything. And we're going to be able to face tons of these fears and come out the other side and cross the, the terror barrier and, and change our whole lives. So many of us are going to be able to do that if we focus the right way. Matter of fact, anybody that focuses the right way, they can, they can do that. It's the people that get stuck in the fear and go down. And I see, see people doing that too. And I have a really hard time relating to them, but I'll be glad to hold this space for anybody that's stuck to help them come to the next level. And then you do it for somebody else. And we keep paying it forward so that, they, so that we come out of this, you know, kicking ass, changing the whole world, all learning to, to work together better. And again, that's, that's where it's at. Um, awesome. So I've seen the chat's been going nuts. The coaches I'm sure are doing a great job. 
Uh, sorry about the audio pro problems. I think we finally figured out that there's something wrong with my laptop, so I'll probably just have it wiped and rebooted and redone, you know, over at, at the Microsoft store um, and kind of go from there. And um, with that said, um, I want to open it up to some questions. This was actually a really fun one for me, especially since I have my whiteboard and my <laughs> diagrams and I can get up and move around and talk. Uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. So let's, uh, let's take some questions. Who wants to feed me the questions you've been seeing? Anthony, you got on mute. Okay. I say, Jonathan, if you can do the questions in the Q&A, I'll do the ones in the uh, chat. Yeah, I can do that. Okay, awesome. All right. So a uh, question from Jonathan. Let me see, is that the first one? Getting used to your computer. I know, it's not an Apple. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, from Anonymous, actually. Um, can you talk about body tension relating to holding back your self uh, expression and how you would use releasing to be able to express yourself more? Well, um, it's kind of a simple concept. It's uh, the more tension you hold in the body, the less self expressive you are because the more uh, you can't, the less you can feel your body. If I'm really tight, like everybody tighten up. If you really tighten up, it becomes harder to feel your subtle emotions and the emotions you want to express. The more relaxed your chest is open, your, your rib cage, your intercostals are loose. And these can be micro tightness, something you wouldn't normally notice, but so subtle. And just a hair looser, a hair looser, 1%, 1%, down into the gut, down into the, 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 the hips. And you start just relaxing all these areas. Um, the more you'll start to feel subtleties of emotion and feeling that are stored in these parts of the body. We tighten them up to actually avoid some feelings we don't want to feel. And so as we loosen them back up, those feelings begin to feel better and better and better, those parts of our body. And actually, it causes a lot of healing physically, too. This is what yoga is all about. Yoga is not about stretching. Yoga is about depth of feeling and opening these areas up so you can feel deeper into them and release more emotions and stored emotions from the body. See, emotions store or seem to store in the body and then parts of the body tighten up not to feel. So if we get really hurt and we don't want to feel our heart anymore because we feel love right here typically, we start closing up some micro tightening of closing up in the chest and, and becoming really tight right here. And it becomes hard to, for people to feel our emotions. Um, same thing with our turn on. We become ashamed of our turn on and we start closing off in our hip area and we start locking up our hips. So every bit of micro tightness you can remove from those areas, just bits at a time, 1% here, 1% there over days and weeks and months, the more access to emotion and feeling you'll have and the more you'll be able to convey that to other people while you talk. Um, and, uh, and it'll be so much easier to connect with you. The simplest high becomes completely different. If I'm locked out of my body, really tighten the chest and tighten here and I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? What's your name? My name's Brian, where are you from? It feels very different, right? And then if I start to loosen and start to open back up and drop down and, hey, how you doing, man? My name's Brian, where are you from? You can feel the difference in the subcommunication. And that's true in all aspects of life, dating, sales, uh, getting funding for a VC position. And it, with yourself, if you start to feel more and more and you start to talk, self-talk to yourself and it gets deeper into the body, it starts to reprogram the subconscious mind better too. Was there a second part to that question I missed, Jonathan? Oh, did I get the whole thing? Oh, how can you use releasing? Releasing is just anytime you release, you're, you're releasing stored trauma from the body. That's all. Um, so every bit of releasing is going to slowly open up and loosen your body more. And you can actually pick an area and move it and do releases. You can feel into the heart and rock and move and any tightness and, and heavy emotions that are in there, you can start letting them out and, and opening that area too. Um, okay, go for it. What else we got? I think we wrote how to do releasing. There's going to be a class. I'm going to do a tiny mini class on it. Uh, I think, is it tomorrow or the next day? I can't remember, but it's coming up. Let's check the schedule. Okay, go for it. Next question. I am experiencing the nice guy codependency persona because I have twice broken up with my girlfriend of a year and a half. And um, each time I go... Um, and I have each time call her back to the following day to reconcile. Now we are planning to see a therapist to talk about the reasons I broke up with her. I'm not sure whether I should stay broken up with her or whether I should repair the relationship. Any suggestions? Also, 
what actions, therapies can you recommend in terms of easing my codependency? Um, well, first off, I can't tell you what to do with your girlfriend because I don't know the whole, that, that's a huge topic. I need to sit down with you and talk to you for a bit. And, but the question is, do you know you don't want to be with her and you're only with her out of fear? That's a, that's a huge question you can ask yourself right away. I, I knew, I've stayed with one girl for three years when I was young that I knew I should have broken up with after the first date, second date, but I just was too nice of a guy to avoid doing the breakup and we ended up together for years. And I was miserable the whole time. And then when I would break up with her, I'd feel like I was losing an arm. But then when I was with her, I'd feel miserable. I knew I shouldn't be with her, even when I broke up with her. And I felt like I reached a point where it felt like I was losing an arm, but I still knew she was the wrong girl for me. I knew there was something psychologically wrong with me and emotionally wrong with me. And I began to come to that realization um, because I knew ultimately I would not be happy with her. She's not the girl for me. And you go check inside and see if you have any of those feelings going on. Now, if you're not, if you're truly not sure, even when you're with her and you feel like she's a really good match for you, then yeah, do some therapy, you know, see what's going on in there. Find a really good therapist you both like, uh, that you feel has some good skill set and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, now, as far as the understand, you got to understand something before you can do something about it. So reading a book like No More Mr. Nice Guy from Dr. Robert Glover, uh, a guy who got some interviews with him on this channel, is really powerful. That book will illustrate the nice guy in such a way. You'll start to see all the cycles and the circles and the things you create with it. And then reading the follow-up book to, to that would be, and it has not written by him, it's a completely different style, is The Way of the Sphere of Man, which is more of a third stage man coming out of the nice guy. Now the bonus to having been a nice guy, I was an extreme nice guy, is that in the first stage, it's like you're selfish. I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna do what I want. The second stage, you're a nice guy. You know, I'm gonna take care of you and I'm gonna be there for you, but it's coming out of neediness because you don't wanna be rejected, you don't wanna be abandoned. But what the nice guy does is it develops all this emotional sensitivity, the ability to feel some uh, her emotions better than any first stage guy ever could, the ability to re relate better than any first stage guy ever could. So when you get to the third stage, back to you're not concerned, you're not trying to people please anymore, you're no longer a nice guy then, but you can still relate, have these deep conversations. You'll connect to her and relate to her deeply because you care, not because you have to for validation. And you'll have the ability to do that. So the nice guy is training grounds for this third stage guy. So read uh, uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy and Way of the Spirit Man. If you haven't been in a program and you want to get in here, we directly work on that stuff hardcore with experiential work to start breaking it from your nervous system. So if you can ever get into one of our workshops, Definitely do that. Uh, that'll help a lot. And then I've also got some videos on the nice guy too on the channel. Check those out. There's one that's really old. It was really popular. It, just, it was when I first started doing YouTube, but it got a lot of views. So maybe I should do another one on the nice guy. Let's let's put that somewhere on a note and just do another nice guy video and uh, where I break all the, the patterns down. Okay, cool. What else we got? Rudy is asking, um, hey, Brian, you mentioned before that it's good to have some sort of mastermind group that can keep you accountable and help you grow. But what if you don't have that option? Is it really that necessary? As I am confident, I can achieve and grow on my own. Uh, you can achieve and grow on your own to some degree. But if you don't get around people that are more advanced than you, that are growing in the direction you want to go and you don't have them support, it's going to be a very slow process. Um, if you really want to go fast, that's one of the most important things you can do. And you got to understand what a mastermind group is, is different than um, just getting a bunch of people to hold you accountable is one thing. That's not a mastermind. A mastermind is all people that have agreed to a certain set of principles to, to work together, their accountability, but they also know how to get, they understand at a higher level how to get along, how to work together, how they're going to support each other. They have a whole system in place where they, they, they actually have predetermined this idea of focus in a certain direction together. And, um, and that's really powerful if you can get that. Uh, part of how you can get some of your, your energy if you don't have access to people yet, but they're out there. If you, have, if you really want to be with a group of people or have a coach or something, it's out there. By law polarity, it has to be. Uh, so if you, if you don't have access to that immediately, books, tapes, uh, excuse me, books, recordings, training programs like this online, webinars, are all, uh, all awesome ways to get exposed to the energy. But ultimately, I don't care if it's now or six months or a year from now, start, even if you have to go to some free workshops where there's like-minded people or because you don't have the money or you don't think you have the money. I always say people don't because money is easier to get than we think once we change our mindset. So 
uh, start getting into groups of people that have uh, similar energies and just at least be around them and hang around them. And then you, and, and the next part to that is to start getting people out of your life that are pulling you down, it's been exposing yourself to them less and less or completely getting them out of your life. Uh, some people you might not want to completely get out of your life because they're family or something, but you can limit exposure and how they affect you, especially when you're first building your stability. You see, what you read, listen to, watch, uh, the people you hang around are going to equal who you are in the next five years. Um, so really take a deep look at that. That's why that's so important. Next is Mario. Um, he's asking, Brian, how can you truly develop faith? And do we need faith in order to achieve our dreams? Yes. You mentioned once a book called God Works Through Faith. Yep. Uh, you do need to develop faith. And I'll explain why. And uh, you don't have to look at it in the Christian sense of faith, even though I think they have a great develop. They're really good at developing it. Um, but this sense of expectancy, belief, faith, that knowingness, this idea that this is going to happen before it happens. It's a feeling in your body. It's a feeling you can cultivate. Faith is, this, for me, is a warm, fuzzy feeling of certainty, a definiteness. Like, this is happening. Matter of fact, it's not only is this happening, it's already happened and I'm just catching up to it. It's happened in my imagination. It's happened in an energetic plane. It's happened in virtual reality. In my body, the physical world is catching up to that blueprint I've already created. Think about it. When you create a blueprint for, the, uh, for a building like the Empire State Building, the blueprint is created in whole and exists in everybody's mind. And they can all picture it and visualize it. We see it in like a virtual reality world. So we all look at the blueprint together. That gets us all on the same page long before the building is created. Then the building catches up to the blueprint. I do the same thing in my mind. And that's what part of what faith is. Faith is attaching. I get the blueprint, the image, but then faith is attaching the energy that this has already happened in that energetic world. And, it's just, and so faith has works. You've used faith for so many things in your life and you don't even realize it. Um, God Works Through Faith is a great book. It's a treatment to program your subconscious mind to understand and feel faith when you read it slowly and meditate on it. That's, what it's, that's why it's such a good book. You can find it on Amazon. Somebody recently republished it. For a long time, people couldn't get copies. You know, you'd have to buy an original for $1,000 to get a copy. Um, but now somebody's re uh, republished it. There's a terrible recording of it on YouTube. The guy reads way too fast uh, and doesn't read in any feeling. Um, but yeah, develop and cultivate faith because faith without works is dead. And so you need to be able to show the things you've created through faith. One of the things he says in there is like, you trust, every time you buy food at the store, you trust the food's going to come out and it's not going to kill you, that they, nobody's poisoned it. You trust the barber's not going to, uh, uh, back in the, he was talking about the days they used to have those old razors, but he's not going to cut your throat. Uh, you trust your car is going to get you to work on time. You don't expect these things to break and fail. You trust the water is going to come out of the faucet. It's really weird when it doesn't. These are all forms of faith. And if you think about it, the whole, let's take plumbing, for example. Plumbing, to keep the water coming out of your faucet is a massive effort of a lot of people running that water all through cities and, and systems. And if we didn't all have trust, i.e. faith in each other and belief that, that everybody's going to show up to work today, that water would stop. Same with electricity, things like that. It's going to eventually break down and stop. So it's a huge team effort to keep that going. And we take it for granted. We see it. It's so in our sub in our subconscious mind that it's going to be there today. We don't even think about it. And it's weird when it's not. It's like, what's going on? This is strange. That's what faith is in a weird sort of way. It's, but on a bigger level, it's knowing that you're already a millionaire deep in the, on the energetic plane and that your physical plane is just catching up to it. And you can feel that turn on and that buzz and that tingle and the endorphin rush in your body around what you already are on that other plane. It's not I'm becoming it, it's that I am it there and therefore everything else is catching up to it. Um, so read God Works Through Faith because that's a great teacher uh, uh, and uh, meditate on it. Read it a bunch of times. I read it at least once, twice a year. Uh, also um, check out, maybe I'll do a reading on it sometime. We'll break down stuff in it. Um, and you can also check out, what else did I want to check out? I think that's about it there's so many books that kind of allude to this idea though but oh and check out the feelings of what you see if you can cultivate what is it when you really truly believe something from your body not from your head like the sense that 
what do you already have faith in? What do you already believe? Like you, maybe you're the best basketball player on the court. Maybe you're amazing at public speaking. What is it that you just have this warm, fuzzy feeling when you do it, you know, you're good at and notice that feel what that feeling feels like. And then relate it to other feelings and, and explore the feelings of faith, explore the feeling of expectancy, explore the feeling of belief, because different words are going to cause different reactions. And some of these words you might be able to relate to better. Explore the feeling of being it. Like you're already it. I'm being it. This is who I am. I'm a guy that's good with women. Women show up. It's, there's no doubt. Um, knowing this. So these are kind of words that are slightly synonymous with faith. And you can explore all of them and go through memories or times in your life when you've had them until you start to get the, the ability to call up that feeling at, wheel, at will, the sense of neurology inside you and you start to apply it to things you're creating you want to apply faith to positive things though things that serve you and serve other people not negative things because you can bring negative things into your life so you'd be careful what you focus on over and over and over again with that with th those feelings so okay what else we got so jonathan is asking um can you give us a life experience where you move towards a goal found tension and resolved it? Uh, give me, ask the question one more time. Sorry, my mind wandered for a second. I missed a piece. Yeah. I was reading a comment. Can you give us a life example, experience where you moved towards a goal, a found tension and resolved it? Oh um, yeah, yeah. How did you do it? Did you have an action plan? Can you, can you tell us how you went about it and achieve your goal? Yeah, uh, I would create sometimes action plans, but I, they would change. We wouldn't always, because I, I, I'm gonna do what's in front of me ultimately. Um, I'll set uh, uh, like goals for a week and I'll, I'll work on those goals to be consistent with them and the next week adjust. Um, but um, as I'm moving towards the big goal, um, one of my goals was, uh, let me think. Um, well, I got so many, there's just like a ton going through my head right now. Um, one of my goals, I've got simple to, to big. Um, some of them just happened. Like I'll give you one that happened and I'll give you a bigger one. Um, one that happened was I saw a video of somebody snowboarding in Japan and I thought, wow, I didn't know you could snowboard in Japan. And then it was super deep powder, knee high, waist high, it's just fluffy. And I heard, then I found out Japan is some of the most amazing snow in the world on the island of Hokkaido and it was just so beautiful and it's like a magical fairy tale land of, of, of powder and I remember many years ago probably 10 years ago I said I want to go to Japan I didn't had no money at the time maybe, maybe it was more than that I'm going to go to Japan someday and snowboard and it wasn't in my reality because I barely snowboarded local at the time um, years went by about five years ago um, because that was in the back of my mind. I felt good about it. I just kind of let it be. And I didn't even really take any much action on it. It was just in the back of my mind all the time, sitting there. And I was always like, yeah, that'd be nice someday. And then, uh, but I didn't ever took action on it. It was kind of weird. And then, but I enjoyed it. And then one day, Dave, my business partner comes in and says, oh, I met this girl at the airport. They do a guiding tours, uh, backcountry snowboarding and skiing tours of different, in different places around the world. Japan's one of the places. And I said, oh, I want to go there. And he said, let's sign up. Just, and immediately, you know, I could have come up with a, a ton of excuses not to go. I just immediately said, you know what? That's been a goal in my life for years. It's gonna happen. I can do it now. I don't care what it costs, let's go. And boom, I just made it happen. And it was a blast. I had faith it would all work out and it did. So that's simple. That was in the back of my mind, it showed up to me. A more complex is building Fearless. Um, I first built, uh, I wanted to start a coaching business and I started one called Inner Confidence, sold that to uh, Robbie Kramer. Um, then started fearless. Uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I started fearless and I had this image for fearless helping all these guys like we're doing. And, and it started out, it was just me and, uh, and this guy, Elmar <laughs> sitting in a little tiny one bedroom apartment and trying to figure out the name. And it was a fearless man, fearless dating, fearless this. And, and I just took the next step. There was a lot of tension in it. I had to write a workshop right away. And I had to sit down with all these books and write a workshop. And I was way more insecure back then. I didn't have all the teachings I have now because I was mainly focusing on dating and some, and some inner confidence too, but, 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 uh, but a lot of dating stuff too. 
and I sat down, I had to write work. I, I mean, every day I would do my affirmations. I would, I would do my, I didn't have releasing then. I would do my movement practices. I would meditate on what I wanted to create. I would bring up my stories. I'd let them go. I would re, I would look at all these goals. I still have the book, original goals I created when I created Fearless. And, um, and I, we've well exceeded it. Um, there's been so many of these all across that. And now the company is bigger than I am. It's actually a corporation. There's many players in the company now. There's a huge staff, as you can see up top. We travel the world. Now, within that, there was a secondary goal to create Fearless and turn it into what it is now and to make a certain amount of money a month, which we've hit and succeeded. By the way, the financials that we've hit and succeeded, and now we've got new financials. Um, and, and there were periods when I shut the company down, brought it back because of all the tension and the things that came up. Again, those were more breakdown to breakthroughs. And then there was one goal in particular that I really liked and I saw one of my mentors was doing it and he showed up uh, somewhere and he, and I realized what he does and he talked about it is he has a staff and he takes that staff all over the world with him. There, he says, they're my friends and they, and I work with them. So we do a workshop in California. We all go together. We do a workshop in New York. We all go together and we stay in nice hotels and we all have fun together and we relax together. And I, and so we travel the world together. I set that goal for fearless and that's exactly what fearless does. Um, it, I, it seems so impossible to have a company that's that successful that we can pay everybody to travel the world and have a good time together. Yet we do it. We fly the staff twice a year to Bucharest. We fly the staff twice a year, four times a year to New York. We fly the staff to, to Miami once a year. We, 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 sometimes we go to uh, Vegas. We, we, and then a lot of times we just take uh, side trips to different countries around the world. And that was, and at the time when I first envisioned it, I had no clue how I would ever get the company. I had no, I, I barely had enough to pay my bills. Uh, I had no clue how I was ever going to get the company to, to a level that we could support a whole staff traveling the world together. And, and that's another great one. Um, I just took the next step and the next step and held the vision in my mind, knowing that the steps would ultimately lead there. It's the same as when you're driving the navigation in your car and your, your navigation is telling you turn left here, turn right there, and you know you're going to New York, and you're just taking the next turn. You, you're, not, you're not constantly thinking about every turn all the way to New York. You're thinking about the next turn coming up, holding the vision of New York in your mind. But, but you can't think about every turn. That would be impossible. Just what's in front of you, do it. And um, in all those cases, I remember when $500 used to seem like a lot of money to me. And now $500 doesn't seem like much at all. I remember when $1,000 used to seem like, now it doesn't seem like much at all. $100,000 used to seem like a fortune. It doesn't seem like that much to me anymore. I have to reframe my mind. And so many stories have left me you know, about, about all this stuff. So um, I hopefully those are good examples. Um, I could probably, if I dug in, get some more concrete uh, and how I fell down and, and, you know, but I've told those stories a lot. No, I told, if you go back and watch the video that I did on my life story, I've got one after another and they're actually, actually very more vulnerable stories about where I really fell down hard and got back up over and over again throughout my life. And that was the first intro video leading up to this series. So it was about three, three, four videos ago. It's the very first one we did. Um, okay. What else we got? Are we going to keep going with the, are we going to do any from the Q and a here? Or are we going to stay on or, uh, because there's two groups of questions, right? For now, I, I'm only in charge of Zoom. I don't know if, um, I don't think we're doing that. YouTube. We only have Zoom, right, guys? So just. Okay, well, Anthony said he had a set of questions, and Jonathan, you had a set of questions. So I assume there were two sets. Is that not true? Yeah, yeah there's, I'm answering the questions in the chat. Uh, okay, okay, got it. Got it. I see what you're doing. Okay, keep going, uh, keep going Jonathan. So, next question. How did imagination and the other laws play a role in your goal? When did you find out that it is not philosophy, but real laws of the universe? I have uh, the story that it's more philosophy than reality, but I want to be, I want it to be real in my life. I'm sorry. That's a very, to me, that's a little confusing. So uh, who, who wrote it? Uh, Jonathan. Is it, is it in the Q and in the question? Yeah. At the top or the bottom? Uh, like number seven. Uh. Oh, here we go. It's the first one that I've got here. How did imagination and the other laws 
play a, a role in your goal? When did you find out that it is not philosophy, but real laws of the universe? I have the story that it's more philosophy uh, than reality, but I want to be, uh, I want it to be real in my life. Gosh, this is this this question of itself has so many gray areas that I could play with, and I'd have to I could sit down and have a discussion with you to have a deeper understanding of what you're thinking. Because right now I, I, you're confusing me a little bit uh, in the way, but I'm going to answer it the best of my ability. <clears throat> uh, I got really dedicated to the laws as I started to learn them from different teachers. Napoleon Hill, uh, The Law of Success, uh, Think and Grow Rich, and there's, there's just all through the whole New Thought movement, they love to talk about the laws. Um, <clears throat> and so one of the best ways to, and I love to take just the seven natural laws, those are the, the easiest to work with, and I'm gonna do a video on those. But what you can do is if you take, and this is what literally what I did, you want clarity. Okay, and first off, this isn't a universe of vague ambiguities, okay? It's not random. We can calculate a calendar precisely every year. We can track time through, because by the way the planets rotate. Um, it's a, it's a, it, we can time, the, 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 the mechanics of this universe are so precise, we can time the landing of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of the moon landing to a fraction of a second. And you can't tell me that it's it's a bunch of that, that there's not a ton of precision throughout this whole universe and how it works consistency or we wouldn't be able to do stuff like this we wouldn't be able to do stuff at this level you know planes would randomly fall out of the sky which they do occasionally but there's always a good reason that they understand why um, planets would be bouncing off and going off of their orbits and and a year would be different from year to year that doesn't happen it's there's a ton of consistency in the universe. So if that's the case, then that has to be true pretty much everywhere if you look deep enough. So if you take the seven natural laws and you just take them out to nature and you watch them in nature, you see all the different aspects of each law in nature, you begin to see more and more how everything functions, literally, not philosophically. Um, and you go deeper and deeper with that every time you do it. And then you begin to take it into society and see the same seven natural laws consistently working in society. Maybe one day I just sat in front of a diner and I, I sat at the counter and I watched all the operation of all the, 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 the wait staff and all the, the coffee maker and, the, and the, the drink dispenser and this thing. And I watched how everything operated in relationship to specific laws that we're looking at. And it's all super consistent. You can see the law of polarity everywhere. You can see the law of relativity everywhere. You can see the law of gestation everywhere. And you, and you can see how some of these laws are mutable. They can change. Like the law of gestation can change depending on consciousness level of the individual applying it. And you begin to see that too. <clears throat> An example of that would be um, that it, it, the, law, the gestation period for 200 years ago or 500 years ago for metal took a certain amount of time to turn that metal into a certain type of sculpture. As we've advanced and become more conscious, we've, we become more aware of more tools and more techniques for manipulating the metal to heat it higher, faster, the gestation period uh, becomes quicker. And uh, you could say a human baby is what, nine months to, to, to first gestation period. But in reality, that is absolutely true in reality. But watch, as science moves forward, whether it's right or wrong, we can start to manipulate potentially that gestation period through science. Not that we should. I don't think we should. But that potentiality is there. So consciousness is one of the things that changes the laws and how they operate. But the consciousness operates in the sense of is, is we're, not, we're not violating the laws. We're working within the overall law of vibration uh, to create a new reality. Um, so that's my best example right there based on what you said. And if, as you see these laws in effect more and more, you, and you begin to trust them, build a real strong sense of trust, you'll be able to change all kinds of stuff in your life. And then, um, and results. That's another thing. You can sit and philosophize all day long. You can sit and think about things all day long and contemplate, but without faith, without works is dead results get out there and make things happen. And that's gonna be your best teacher. The more you see these breakdown of breakthroughs, you see these things happening and you build belief and faith and you begin to realize that you create your reality 
with time, as your consciousness grows, you get a better and better ability to create your reality. At a lower level of consciousness, you have, it, it's, it's hard to see how you're creating your reality. But as you get higher and higher, you get conscious control over that. You'll start to see more and more through the action, through the process of releasing, through watching the laws, you begin to see that there are very consistent systems to everything. And then as long as you work within them, you have to be able to make money. You have to be able to succeed. You have to be able to grow. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, what else we got? I saw Mike wanted to answer a question that came through the chat. Um, do you want to answer that question, Mike? Yeah, I can. We're trying to answer some of the questions through chat since there are so many. We're just not going to be able to get all of them live. I just I just hit the wrong button. Okay, um, yeah. it said yeah. you want to answer it live, so I was like, okay. You know. Yeah, I hit the wrong button. Okay, cool. Um, what other questions we got? Patrick is asking. In my life, many things have changed for the better, but I'm really I'm a really slow learner. My impression is that others reach goals faster than me, but I really but I dig really deep. Need more time. When I look back at my achievements, see more, uh, seems more solid than others. Is there a way that I can speed things up? Yes, there is. And it could very well be that they're more solid because you really want to explore the depth of something and get it concrete in your nervous system. So there's nothing wrong with going slow. I'd much rather have slow and consistent changes than fast changes because slow and consistent changes are going to compound to some massive success over time. If you take the Beatles, the Beatles played in dingy bars two and three shows a day, something like that, for many, many, many years before anybody ever heard, heard of them other than the people that went to those little bars. They were nobodies. And then overnight, they were a success, but it was through this slow, consistent, repetitive practice uh, of their basic skill sets and their skill sets diving them deep into their nervous system that allowed them to finally compound to that point where the, in the compounding interest, the, the, the energy started to rise and then they were an explosion of success. So it, it created the appearance of, I am now a success overnight, but they're not. They were years and years of compounding and building. The same thing with bamboo. If you see this in nature, and again, if you understand how the universe works, look at nature. Bamboo grows roots and grows downward before it grows up. So, and it does that for like seven years or five years. It digs these roots down and goes and, and really solidifies itself. And then in one year, seven or five years later, whatever it is, it sprouts up really fast. So it really has a big sprouting every so many years. Um, that's that compounding interest point where everything's ready for that massive amount of growth. So you could be doing that. Um, the, uh, the other piece is you can start to go faster with time. You will start to go faster if you allow yourself. You probably have a lot of stories about your ability to learn. And I had these two. Um, and you can actually do releasing on those stories. You can start to welcome the part of you that thinks you're, you're slow, you're, you can't handle it. You probably are constantly, like my mind would do, is have one thought and interrupt it with another thought and interrupt with another thought and stuff wasn't getting deep in the subconscious mind. So learning to open your subconscious mind more, not self-attack, not self-abuse, will start to allow more information in if that's the case. So, uh, so a daily practice of releasing on your ability to remember, learn, uh, could you could do that for like a month, two months, three months and see what happens and, uh, and don't rush it. Don't look for any results the first week or two, because if you truly have this resistance to learning and then you're trying to do releasing, which is kind of like learning, then what's going to happen is you're probably going to intensify and get worse before you get better. In other words, all these crazy thoughts are going to start coming up and telling you you can't do it, this won't work, and you're probably actually going to seem like you're learning slower for a while. So that's why I want you to give yourself at least a month to three months of releasing, 10 minutes a day even, uh, and see what happens. Okay. Dave um, is asking, is this the same as sub goals or small tasks? Um, I'm pretty sure he was asking a he asked that question uh, at the same time you were talking about something else. But uh, he continues to say, could you say more about how to start the path between now and, and the goal? How do you know if it's a sub goal or a new level of consciousness that's actually on the path? What would that first level be? Um, well, first off, are you picking a goal that excites you? 
uh, it's there's two two things I always look at in a goal. I shoot I shoot for a, a goal that's that's big enough that it excites me, not so big that I want to give up. That uh, that it seems too improbable that I'll ever achieve it. Um, and uh, if you want to, if you're really excited about setting a huge goal, like I'm going to be a billionaire, and it doesn't scare you, go for it. Write that down, and then and then also have a, a, a what we call an, an initiative or a sub goal, as you called it moving in that direction something that's achievable and doable quickly um so i'll have they're almost like stair steps on the way to the big goal so what's my achievable goal my achievable goal might be maybe i've never had a business and i've never made a thousand dollars and i want to set the goal next month to make a thousand dollars in my business on my way to ultimately and that, that's the first level of okay i accomplished my first goal that sounds exciting to me it sounds fun i could use an extra thousand dollars i've never started a business it'll be my first sale and then next month i'll change the goal again and I'll change the goal again. And in the back of my mind, that's where we're going. That's where we're going. Every day I look, that's where we're going. And each one of these is, is in my mind, I'm telling myself I'm building up to it. And the next thing you know, you're at 10,000 a month and you're going from there. Um, so that's what initiatives do. And each one of those initiatives can be a breakdown to breakthrough on your way to the big goal. If you look at, um, uh, Mark, I think this is a good example, is Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook. Um, his initial goal from what I understand with Facebook was not to market, not to sell, not to make money. He had one goal. He likes one goal and he put it on his desk in front of him. That's, he just says, how do we get to that goal? And so that goal for him was a hundred million subscribers, I believe. And, um, and every meeting they had, they would say he, that he filtered through that goal. Everything, every decision he made said, does it move me even one step closer to that goal was kind of the attitude. So they could have a meeting. And they would say, um, Mark, I've got this great idea for Facebook. We could do this and blah, 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 blah. And he would say, does it get us more subscribers? No, but it can do this. I don't care. Get it out. I don't care how good the idea is. All I care about is this amount of subscribers. When I get there, I'll make a new decision. And the next thing would come in. Does And it'd be kind of a mediocre idea, but it moves them a little closer to that idea. Put it in. So he was very clear about his focus. And he's a billionaire now. And he started out with nothing in college, one little step at a time, focusing on the next breakthrough, the next break, the next breakthrough, right? Until he got to that. Uh, and then eventually, you know, it went from 100, uh, 000, 100 million subscribers to the next level. I don't even know if he ever set a goal of a billion dollars. He set a goal of huge amounts of growth, which I meant creating tons of value for a lot of people, which then equaled a huge amount of return. So I don't know if he ever set a, a dollar figure. Cool. Um, hopefully that answers your question uh, as best as I can get it there. Okay, we're at 12.36, so it's been over an hour and a half. Do we have any other one that, that, that we want to answer that's uh, important right now? There is over, there's 25 questions. We're not, we're not getting to them all today. It's, uh, you know, we, we, you, you, did, you did pick them at random, right? You jumped around, picked out good questions. No, I'm just uh, following the structure here. But, okay. Uh, I'll do that. Yeah, fine. Uh, in the future, what I'd like you guys to do is look at, if you see somebody that's posted and you remember them from the day before and he didn't get his question asked and you, he's posted the last couple of days, it's kind, of, it's kind of start tending towards those people too a little bit. So then if you see, if, you, if somebody's got a lot of questions in and I've answered them a lot, then we move towards another person and just kind of move them around a bit. Um, so I want to give everybody a chance to ask a question if possible, but Especially as we get bigger, we're not gonna be able to answer all these questions. So is there any one more question? Yeah, let me pick one at random, I guess. Is, um, is there any questions from women out there? No. There's a few women on this call, so I'm just curious. Renee, is it male or female? Um, get to okay. That. okay, cool. So I have this question um what is a good way to developing a good relationship with yourself so that you're alone and you can actually enjoy your own company great question um and the more you do releasing the more you are developing a relationship with yourself the more you do movement work the more you're developing a relationship with yourself um there's two aspects of what you need and you have to open to those two aspects, your masculine aspect and your feminine aspect, whether you're male or female. Your masculine is your ability to ground yourself 
and appreciate yourself while you're grounding yourself in a sense, but to ground yourself, contain yourself, lead yourself to direct yourself. It's a sense of self trust, this trust that I can follow through, get things done, take action. And that builds self esteem. The more you build that self trust, the more you build self esteem. So having a program, a daily program of, of, of really just welcoming in what is masculine energy. If I welcome it in and, and like, imagine you're a hose and you're turning on the spigot of feeling masculine energy, presence energy come through you. And then what will happen is, is you open at the other end and you imagine giving it away to the world. And the more you can allow that process and then start to enjoy that process and appreciate that process, the more, um, the more you get with that masculine side and then, and then you start doing exercises where you go out to complete things and every little thing it's, I don't care if it's only a couple of days or a day, the more things you complete and follow through when you say, and you set something in stone, I am going to do this. This is in stone. It's not just something I think I'm going to do, but this is in stone. You complete it. You start to build that self of trust, which builds that self esteem. So doing a lot of that, especially in the beginning, if you haven't done that a lot, then the next piece is welcoming your feminine energy. Uh, that's love, appreciation, that's the gratitude I just talked about. So opening your heart and imagine as a man or a woman that you're letting in feminine, you're letting it appreciate you, you're letting it nurture you, you're letting it love you in all forms, not just women, but it could be a painting, could be flower, could be uh, music, anything that has the depth, the subtle depths of feeling and just practice letting it run through and then back out your body through expression, giving it away. And that feminine energy can be so healing. So together you'll build this sense of love and appreciation, and the sense of strength and self-esteem, which will then like, allow you to like yourself more because everything you want in life comes through you and then you give it away. And you're constantly creating a cycle of receiving and giving away. That's the way, that's the way life works. If you understand all the laws of, of the universe, you don't get anything for nothing. As much as people want to get something for nothing, they want to sit down, provide no value and just receive using the law of attraction, it will never work. You have to work within the laws. And um, now it can appear like somebody's get, doing something for nothing because they're not, isn't, they're not doing much. They're sitting there and primarily meditating and everybody's circling around them and, and, and giving them what they need. But in reality, they are still giving something, whether it's through talks or through energy or through uh, love they're giving off or something like that. They're causing a reaction that's causing people to want to give to them. Um, Kobe Bryant is rich because of all the joy and value he created in the world. It was rich. His family is rich um, because of all the people he affected. It's, 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 and it, whether you realize that or not, that's what, that's what he gets paid for. Um, and so, um, and you can do that indirectly. You don't even have to be a famous name. It can be something you created that affected the world and nobody knows your name. It can have a huge effect and that's what causes that return. And now, um, and, uh, and so that's the basics. There's deep, we're going to get deeper into that when we get into money. We're going to do a money program at some point. We're going to get deeper and deeper into the exchange of value and energy and how it all works and how you can have it work in a bad way and in a good way and a dark way and a light way. And you start seeing all the energies at play. Okay. Um, that's really good. I'm going to mute you, Jonathan. Hold on one sec. Thank you. I was trying to, I'm not used to uh, uh, Apple computers anymore. I haven't had one in years. Um, guys, you were awesome. I really enjoyed this call. I had a lot of fun with it. If you like the whiteboards and you like me dancing around and except for the microphone issues, we're fixing that. Uh, I figured out it's my laptop finally, um, which is weird because my laptops always work perfect. So um, if you like this and you like all this stuff, please comment, let us know what, let me know next week if there's more of any of this that you want to know more about. Like if we had a specific topic and you want more teachings on that, this now is the time to write it in so the coaches can see it, uh, particularly in the area of moving from fear to courage and ultimately acceptance and peace and learning to live that way. Uh, we do have a releasing class coming up, so that's going to be coming. Um, but anything in this area so that I can constantly develop teachings around what you guys want. You guys are an awesome audience and fearless is moving in this direction. We're going to keep all these awesome dating teachings. We've spent years uh, developing. I, I spent years figuring this out, doing deep work on it, but we're also going to start taking these same deep, deep principles into other areas of life, the ability to create abundance, the ability to heal, the ability to create money. And we're going to start teaching principles on the subconscious mind and that, and how to get that out there. Not so much the techniques. We'll bring in other people to teach. Like if you, this is how you create a web page if we do something like that, but we're going to be on the mindset and the belief because without that, you don't have the, the fuel 
to fuel what you want to create. I mean, I can give you the best opportunity in the world. If you don't believe you will do good at it, you will fail at it. So that's the type of stuff we're heading towards. Now we got more calls coming up this week. Um, has anybody got the, the, the list of the next call? What's the next one coming up uh, for the group? I can pull it up real quick if not. Let me see. Give me a second. This is taking a bit to load up. Let's see. Yeah. Next one is Saturday. Okay. Today is Thursday. So we have we're skipping Friday. We have one on Saturday. What's the what's the it's at eleven a.m. What's the topic? Uh, this one will be with you and Sam. It's on how to turn self abuse into self love. Awesome. I'm super excited about this one. Sam's gonna be in the teaching. I'll be on it, just kind of hosting and answering questions and so forth. Um, can you guys mute yourself? Awesome. Sam is a master at turning self abuse into self love. He's so sensitive to that. So good at it. I highly recommend you. If you live, for those of you that believe in self, self esteem, self love is at the core of all of this. If you love yourself and have self esteem, there's nothing you can't figure out or do. I can teach this stuff and you'll take it on so fast. You'll get good with women fast. And Sam had to go through that journey. Sam started out, uh, very, very self abusive. I was actually shocked at how his negative self talk was so hard and he completely transmuted that stuff. He is so loving to himself and others now. He's, he's an amazing coach, lives an amazing life. He's 63, killing it with dating, with life, with traveling the world. He says his 63rd or 62nd year was the best year and this year is only getting better. Uh, so if you want to hear Sam talk about this, this is a, this do not miss it be on the call and please refer, share um, uh, this information with whoever you think would benefit from it. Like I don't care, male, female, old, young, get as many people on these calls as possible because the more, the more positivity we create, the more it comes back to us. So let's do that. Also um, make sure again to make sure get, get comments out, let us know what you want. And uh, I think that's it. Is there anything else I need to cover before we, uh, the, the, the page is uh, the fearlessman.com slash uh, 21 days for anybody that you think would want to sign up. Is there anything else I need to cover guys? Yeah, just um, if you sign up, uh, make sure you also um, request to be added to the Facebook group. They're uh, gonna, the, yeah, the calls, uh, the recordings are gonna be posted there. Okay, is that a secret or a closed? Facebook page? Yeah, when you when you sign up, when you um, go to the landing page, you put in your email, there's a second option that says, I've joined the Facebook group. Okay. And there's a link there. Perfect. So it's a closed Facebook group. Go join that. Get started right away. So if you didn't get your question answered here today or you want me to get into any specific topics, get on that Facebook group and, and put it in there. Put your questions in there. Um, that's our chance to keep uh, keep you guys daily talking to you guys and, and keep us all moving in that positive direction. So, um, so that's pretty much it. I had a beautiful time talking to uh, you, you all and um, sound like a cowboy y'all. And uh, we'll be back on Saturday, uh, rare to do more. And I will talk to you later guys. Have a beautiful, um, beautiful Thursday afternoon. Take care.